Good morning, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day. Now, instrumental music has been a staple of my listening habits for about as long as I can remember. And my enjoyment of instrumental music was a hugely influential part in what made me want to become a media composer, which is what I do now for my job, which is weird. And the reason that I love instrumental music so much is something I always find very difficult to explain or describe, but I'm going to try. So that's what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna talk about why I love instrumental music so much and why I think you should listen to more instrumental music as well. So I'm gonna break it down into three sections. The first section is kind of about my history and why I think I like instrumental music so much. Now, a lot of you may already know this, but I grew up around a lot of classical music. I'm the youngest in my family. My parents are both musical, my brothers and sister are musical, and I was accepted when I was about eight or nine years old to become a chorister at Gloucester Cathedral, which is kind of where my musical education began. Now, I know that choral music is, you know, the polar opposite of instrumental music, obviously, but having that background and always growing up hearing classical music everywhere. You know, my parents would only listen to that. I think that a large part of why I have this sort of innate appreciation for instrumental music is because throughout so much of my early development years, it was just there. It was just in the rooms when we'd be having dinner, something that would be spoken about frequently. And, you know, I'd get dragged along to concerts and symphonies by my parents when I was really young and I hated it. I wanted to be playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. But I do strongly believe that being in that environment, hearing, instrumental, orchestral, classical music, and I say, you know, classical in a very broad way. It just gets into your head, and I don't know if I would have the same appreciation for instrumental music now, were that not to have happened. I was kind of programmed to be able to enjoy music that didn't have words and didn't have vocals, but that will have mostly been an influence in classical music, because I do really, really enjoy listening to classical music now. And that is sort of the first type of instrumental music that I would, I would talk about, and it's something that is often not put under that category, part of instrumental music. But if you are someone who enjoys listening to instrumental music, the chances are then you'll probably be able to find things that you like in classical music as well, because all of the things that I love in the more contemporary forms of instrumental music that I listen to are present in classical music and orchestral music as well. So I guess that's like the first point in this video. And I know that it's not an argument for why you should listen to instrumental music, but I just thought it might give a bit of context and explain why it is that I like instrumental music so much and a bit of my musical history. So the second part of this video, I will talk about soundscapes. And as examples of this, I'm gonna be talking about instrumental music that has a driving beat or a rhythm that goes all the way through. So not the ambient ethereal stuff, that'll all be in the third section, but beat driven, instrumental, often electronic music. Soundscapes, minimalism, and progressive listening. This is one of the key things that I love about instrumental music. So take emotional catharsis out of the equation. I'm not talking about music that makes you feel better when you're sad or heartbroken or anything like that. This is purely about the actual listening experience, not about the emotions that that experience solicits within you. Now this type of music, you know, deep house, ambient techno, this is the kind of stuff that a lot of people criticize and they say that you know, oh, it's just the same beat going over again, it's really repetitive, it's boring, there's no talent to it. Which is a bit of a stupid thing to say because all you're doing is letting everyone know that you don't understand the music. Oh, oh, I sound like a massive hipster snob, don't I? Just to clarify, there is nothing wrong with not liking ambient techno music, you know, that's fine. The thing that's wrong is assuming that there are no reasons to like that music just because you don't. Anyway, I digress. So the idea of building these soundscapes that evolve around you, a really, really good example of this is in a Max Cooper remake of the Ripperton song, A Ski Lift Upstairs The Sleeping City, I think is what it's called. It's an amazing track and I was introduced to this by a good friend of mine, Matt, and it has always stayed with me because this was the first time I listened to that type of music and understood it and got it. It's about eight minutes long and it's the kind of thing that you just need to put headphones on and lie down and listen to it. And I'll, I'll have a link to it down there if anyone wants to hear it. But yeah, that track creates this percussive soundscape that you can just get lost in. And it's not about making yourself feel better about a situation you're in or emotions that you're going through. It's just about getting lost in this, you know, musical landscape. And that type of music is heavily influenced by minimalism. And the thing with minimalism is that, you know, it's a very easy genre to criticize, but 
What happens when you repeat something, you have the same loop going over and things are built on top of it and added to and taken away, is that when you're really listening to it and you're listening to it from the perspective of hearing this kind of sonic world instead of trying to you know, find the interesting progressive melodies, then the tiniest of change seems absolutely huge. You know, the timbre of a hi-hat changing for an eight bar phrase or a very, very minimal atmospheric synth coming in for a certain passage of it. These things, when you are in that soundscape, you really hear them. It's the kind of thing that, you know, if it's at a party, no one's gonna notice these things happening, but when you are absorbed in this sonic world, this is so pretentious, um, you hear these things so clearly and it completely alters everything and it allows you to appreciate all of these different things. I mean, the Max Cooper track, I've been listening to that for years and I will still hear things in that that I hadn't noticed before and it kind of unlocks this whole other world to the track. I just think that that's a wonderful thing to be able to do. It kind of transcends the traditional ideas of what music is and what it's for and gives it this whole new sort of space to breathe and live in. It's kind of like if every single day you look out at the same view of, you know, the Swiss Alps. Every day you see this and then one day you look at it and a pylon has been erected on one of the mountains. Now, from the perspective of the scale of the whole view you're looking at, this is a very, very small, insignificant thing. But when you see this every single day, a tiny thing like that completely changes the whole view for you and the perspective of it. And that's why I like these minimal beat driven soundscapes. And if you want some examples of that kind of music, two of my favorites would be John Hopkins and Chiasmos. You know, listen to anything by either of these and hopefully you'll be able to experience that and hear what I mean. And that Max Cooper track as well. Just the idea of these soundscapes that, like I said, have got nothing to do with emotion. They're just about getting lost somewhere. And it's just a form of escapism that I find really, really refreshing. Right, now we're on to section number three. I'm gonna be talking primarily about ambient instrumental music. And this will probably be the biggest and main argument I have for why I love instrumental music so much and why I think you should listen to more of it. It does not tell you how to feel. And that's the most important thing for me. You know, instrumental music acts as, and this is gonna sound incredibly wacky, it's like a canvas for your emotional catharsis to be splattered all over. The meaning of the music isn't confined to a single emotional experience or feeling. It allows you to project your own emotions and your own experiences into its framework and that's just wonderful. Now there's nothing wrong with music that has vocals. I love music that has vocals. I'm writing a vocal EP at the moment and songs are really important. We all need to hear things that mirror our own experiences and articulate how we're feeling better than we can ourselves. But instrumental music I feel just gives you unlimited emotional freedom if that sort of makes sense. And yeah some of it will sound really melancholy or really sad. Some of it might sound really hopeful. But the thing that's great is that despite whatever the composer of the music's original intention was, it's instrumental. So you don't have to go on that same journey. You can project different experiences onto music that was written about something completely different and no one minds and it's fine because that's what the music is there for. And I have found that when I've got a lot going on in my head, listening to instrumental music can help me work out what I'm feeling and why I'm feeling that way significantly faster than vocal music can. Because you're not just listening to music that affirms what you already think you're feeling. You're listening to music that sort of forces you to address your issues introspectively because it will make you project these things yourself. You know, if you're feeling like shit about certain things, if you listen to a load of really, really nice ambient instrumental music, then often your subconscious will start putting things into that canvas that you might not have necessarily been aware were a thing or were what you were getting upset about, but it still just happens. And that's because your brain isn't being forced to, in one way or another, think about the words that are being put in your ears and that situation. Yeah, it can just help you realize things about who you are and what you're feeling much faster than would have been possible if someone was whispering in your ear, I guess. That is arguably the most pretentious video I think I've ever made. I and mean, if you want some really good examples of instrumental ambient music, look no further than Hammock. Anything by Hammock, because they do all types of different instrumental music. That's the other good thing, because they've got something like Everything and Nothing, which is more post-rocky, so it's like ambient post-rock. But then maybe they will sing for us tomorrow is really kind of just ethereal and 
dreamscape-y sort of thing. So yeah, if you want to listen to the type of music that I've been listening to for years that I get the most out of in this sense, Hammock is where I'd say you should start. So there you have it. That's why I love instrumental music and that's why I think you should listen to more instrumental music. So hopefully you can experience some of that for yourself. And uh, speaking of instrumental music, you can pre-order a vinyl copy of my instrumental debut EP, Her, there. There'll be a link in the description and links to the Spotify as well if you wanted to hear it there. So that's it, that concludes this video. Like I said, links in the description to my own music if you wanted to check it out, it'd be amazing. Um, also links to my Instagram and all of that stuff. So thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this. Let me know who some of your favorite instrumental artists are or tracks that you really, really, really like. Or maybe just experiences that you've had listening to instrumental music. Or maybe you massively disagree with me and want to call me a pretentious twat, which is fine too. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you very soon.